Hi, Fashion Dolls. It is Motivation Monday, February 26th, and welcome to an all-new episode of Style by Steezy. Our very special guest today is an award-winning actor, and he is no stranger to the show. This will be like, I think, his third appearance here, and he's here, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, let's welcome back Kevin J. Stone. Hello. Hello. Let me move my camera up some. I'm a little cutting my head off. I don't want to do that. Oh, this bad. <laughs> this bad. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Glad to talk with you again. Yes, it's such a pleasure to have you back. We are now in 2024. Mm -hmm. And the last interview we did was back in 2023. I think we were going into the Thanksgiving holidays mm -hmm. and so much has happened with you since then. But we're now smack dab at the end of February. So since our last interview, what extra has happened before we get into it? I know what's happened, but <laughs> what extra has happened? How did you ring in and celebrate 2024? Uh, uh, so 2024, I actually uh, celebrated pretty kind of quiet with my family. Uh, just went to my parents' house, spent some time with them. Um, but as far as the career-wise, uh, I, I shot a couple movies. I'm actually still working on one of the movies now. Um, I shot one with uh, a director by the name of Marquand Raglan. He's in Wilmington, North Carolina. We shot a film that I just cannot wait for everybody to see called The One That Got Away. There are some uh, some big names in this one, and yeah, I was just surprised cool. that he, he asked me to be a part of this film um, because it, we, it, it's a good one, and we definitely brought it. We have a... Um, I guess I can say some of the people who are in the film. Um, Jabray Horges, he plays on the show Grownish. He's in the film. He's the lead of the film. Um, India Love, if you know, anybody knows India Love, you know, big, you know, influencer. She's in the film. Uh, Jamal Willard, he plays Biggie in the Notorious Films. Uh, Notorious Film, and he's in that as well. And then um, Choice Brown, uh, Tabitha Brown's daughter, she's in the film as well. They all did a great job. And... I cannot wait for everybody to see that when it drops later this year. Um, so I, I did that film, then I'm working on another film. Um, it's called Three Rims and a Hubcap, and it's a period piece set in the 1940s. And I play a guy named Skeeter who was like a ladies' man, and so he was very fun to play. And so I can't get wait. I can't wait to get back to that. And you're working with another ladies' man, Nelson J. Davis, who we all know. Yeah. You're working in a film <laughs> called Trading Partners with him, and I can't wait to see that. That's coming pretty soon. And I well, mean, you've been working with so much. Yeah, so Nelson and I, we shot that film before, uh, but we're okay. reshooting it now, and Nelson's not in this time, but we're reshooting the film, uh, but he did kill it the first time. And yeah, so but Nelson and I have some more stuff coming up, so we'll work together again soon. And I can't can't wait to see it. So other than that, you've got these projects coming out. Are you going to be stepping behind the lens as well, also producing and directing? Um, I, I think that'll be further down the line. I have written something that I have not shot. I wrote something, a uh, short film, maybe like three, four years ago. So maybe I'll get into to shooting that. Um, but I, I'm really trying to get as much acting in as I can before I start directing or step behind the camera. Yes. Yes. I'm looking at the That's comments. I'm on my new phone, you guys. Yes, that, that was one. Alan Yankee says you remind him of a darker, darker Jason. Jason no. Okay, I'll, I'll take that. Thank you. So 2024, the year flew by so mm -hmm. fast. We did our last interview back in Thanksgiving. Uh, you celebrated it with family. family. What else are you looking forward to for this year besides your projects that'll be coming out? For this year, uh, I'm actually I'm looking forward to the summer. To be honest, I I hate cold weather, so I'm just ready for this warm weather to get here. Um, I love going outside to go running, so I'm looking forward to being able to run outside again. So as soon as you know it gets hot outside, I'm back outside because I've been inside too long. Yes, and this winter weather, a lot of people are waiting for this shift. We're seeing the weather shift, mm -hmm. so I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to the spring as well too. So I can't wait for that. Now, we're going to get into some Black History trivia at the end of this interview. Do we have mm -hmm. any questions for myself or Kevin Fashion Dolls? 
because I've been off. I kind of took that break. The last interview that I did was with Fernando Guerrero, mm -hmm. which was last week. And then afterwards, I took that little break. And it feels good to be back, rejuvenated back into the week. We have some great guests this week coming on. Yeah. Closing out the month of February. My brother's birthday is Wednesday the 28th. So I'm Happy super birthday, excited man. for that. Yes. Shout outs to my brother. Um, and it will be going into March kicking off Magnificent March, which is something that I came up just on a whim. So you guys will see <laughs> coming on in March pretty soon. I like once that. I laid out. Yeah, Magnificent March. I was going to go with March Madness, but I said, nope, that's for the football yeah, players. I'm going to do something <laughs> for the a little ball, bit yeah. different. Yes. So Magnificent March will be coming soon as well. So I'm excited. So much is going on this year we are almost mm -hmm. officially booked up for may you guys so thank you guys so much for your love and continuous support this will be interview 570 we are on the road to 600 we have been working non-stop and what i love about it is that i'm able to take breaks and come back mm -hmm. like i never left and you guys welcome me back with open arms so i'm excited for that that's what's been going on on my end okay. other than that original magazine uk you guys can go and check that out as well too so writing directing and producing and you said you've already written something could we yes. see you shooting in the future filming in the future your own projects i feel like that is a a, a task that i am not ready for <laughs> i think unless i'm shooting it on my iphone or something like that i you know I, that's about it but me actually getting behind a camera and actually filming something that would be i think i'll leave professionals to that like i can't do everything I, and i know that i know my strengths i know my weaknesses i know acting is be what, what i'm good at but maybe you know in cinematography maybe not so much yes and you see a lot of people going and i say yes because you see a lot of people that are shooting their films and projects on their phones right. and you would have think that it was shot like with film equipment and everything, but they shot it on their iPhone. Yeah. And I mean, it's crystal clear. So shout outs to all of the producers and filmmakers out here that are yeah. doing that. This is award show season. So you guys have seen over the weekend, so many award shows mm -hmm. going on and congrats to all the nominees for the NAACP Image Awards. We've seen that yeah. shout outs to Choice Spinner, who's been nominated for an NAACP Image Award. So I'm so proud of him. And just yeah. so much going on this year. Paris Fashion Week just kicked off. It's a lot going on. So we're going to be busy this week up until <laughs> March. So, yes. All right, yeah. y'all. So we dished on what Kevin's been up to. It is time for some Black History trivia. Are you guys ready to test your knowledge? Because it uh -oh. is Black History Month. And March, we're heading into March. March is International Women's History Month. So celebrating us and our achievements to the world. So I'm super excited for that. But let's get into some black history trivia. I'm, I told Kevin that I was going to test him. Okay. Let's see how well he knows his black history, all right? And I, I did this. I keep my black, black card after this. That's what, what, that's what <laughs> I guess last week said. He said, Miss Steve, how are you going to do this to me? You know how I'm going to get. So, <laughs> all, right. all right. Let's get into it, y'all. Which U.S. Supreme Court decision in 1954 declared the racial segregation of public schools was unconstitutional? Here's your choices. Okay. Plessy versus Ferguson, Marbury versus Madison, Dred Scott versus Sanford, or Brown versus Board of Education? Brown versus Board of Education. That's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay. All right. That's a little bit easy. So we're going to get a little bit more challenging. Right here. Uh -oh. What was the purpose of the Freedom Rides in 1961? Voting rights to challenge segregation on interstate buses, economic justice, school desegregation. Freedom Rides. Ooh, what was the second one? choice again? What was the second option? What was that? I'm sorry. What was the second option to that you had? Challenge segregation on interstate buses. Oh, that I'm gonna go with that. That's it. Yep. Oh, All okay. right. <laughs> two for two. All right. Okay. This one 
everybody should know this one right here. She okay. just was on uh, Stephen Colbert not so long ago. Who was the mm -hmm. first African American child to desegregate an all white elementary school in the South? Rosa Parks, Coretta Scott King, Ruby Bridges, Daisy Bates. Ruby Bridges. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Three. All right. All right. Here we go. We're gonna get a little bit more. Oh, okay. Yeah. We gonna go. We gonna go through that one. That's a little bit too. Okay. A little bit too easy. I try to make it challenging so that people who don't know about these historical figures can learn a little bit. Yes. All right. Here we go. So let's see. Who authored Go Tell It on the Mountain, a semi-autobiographical novel about a teenager's struggles with his stepfather and the church in Harlem? August Wilson, James Baldwin, Richard Wright, Ralph Ellison. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think this is going to be the one where I mess up. Let me see. Okay, what's, what's the options? One more time. August Wilson, who did the piano. You guys know the piano lesson. Uh, James Baldwin, Richard Wright, or Ralph Ellison? I'm going to go with the first option. That's not it. I, I knew it was going to be this James one. Baldwin. Oh, James okay. Baldwin. James Baldwin. Yes. That was my second option. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Here we go. The novel Invisible Man, which addresses issues on individuality, freedom, identity, was penned by whom? James Baldwin, Langston Hughes, Richard Wright, or Ralph Ellison? I'm going to say Langston Hughes again. It's still not. It wasn't. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, I don't. I don't think it'll be James Baldwin because you just gave me the answer for that one. Ah, uh, so the is it the last option, Richard? Right? God, Cole, you get warmer. <laughs> okay, what, what was the other option? Ralph Ellison. Ralph, Ralph Ellison. Ralph Ellison. Okay. okay yes. Yeah. Okay, this is a little bit more. You guys should know these. These are sports athletes. Okay. Black athletes in sports. Who's the first African American to play major league baseball, oh. breaking the color barrier in 1947? Got it. Oh, uh, Jackie Robinson. That's it. Yep. Which African American tennis player won three Grand Slam titles and later became a prominent advocate for civil rights and social justice? Arthur Ashe, Serena Williams, Althea Gibson, Venus Williams. And he's had a trophy. I'll give you a hint. It's not a woman. He's okay. So Arthur, this person had a trophy named in his, or I think a building named in his honor. You said Arthur Ashe. Arthur Ashe. That's it. Yep. All right. Good. Which African American athlete won four gold medals in the 1936 Berlin Olympics? Challenging Hitler's Aryan supremacy beliefs. Jesse Owens, Carl Lewis, Bob Beeman, Ralph Metcalf. Jesse Owens? That, that's it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going into basketball. Okay. So this might be right up okay. your alley. Who was the first African American NBA player? Michael Jordan, Earl Lloyd, Wilt Chamberlain. Bill Russell. Okay, I don't think it's, it definitely wasn't Michael. It definitely wasn't with Chuck. Bill Russell. Not Bill Russell. It was that second option. That's yeah, Earl Lloyd. Yeah. That's it. Earl Lloyd. All right, this one is easy right here. Which African American female gymnast won four gold medals at the 2016 Rio Olympics? Oh. Okay. Allie Raisman, Simone Biles, Gabby Douglas, Laura Hernandez. Simone Biles. That's it. Yep. All right, y'all. And, and that is Black History Month trivia. I had to shake it up for those of you who do not know because you know <laughs> about some of these historical figures. So I had to make it interesting for those of you that are out there watching. Hey, Rage. Right. Shout out to Rage World. She is an amazing hairstylist so 
definitely go and follow her if follow you have not. Shout out to her. Black woman. Yeah, yeah. I've known Rage for a long time. So we just got through doing some Black History Month trivia uh -huh. um, with Kevin here. Fashion Dolls, in case you guys missed it, you have to go back and catch that replay. Um, again, like I said, March is International Women's History Month, celebrating us and mm -hmm. our achievements to the world. But shout outs to Rage. Again, she's an amazing hairstylist in the RVA area. So if you are in the Richmond, Virginia area, and you guys see how my hair is laid, thanks to myself and Melanie Nalamai Bridges, who always gets me right. Um, definitely go and hear her up if you are in the RVA area. And yes, Black History Month is about celebrating us. Yeah. So it's so much, and she does travel. So hit her up if you are interested in getting your hair laid. Go and check her out. She is awesome. And I've known this woman for a very long time. Since I first started this talk show, I've known Rage. So definitely go and follow her. Um, what else can we expect from Kevin in the year of 24? In the year of 2024, um, I've been auditioning for things. So you're definitely going to see me on a lot more projects this year. Uh, I have some other projects that I didn't mention as well that will be coming up as well. Um, I also forgot to mention that I recently won a award for create, a 2024 I Creative of the Year. Mean, um, I wasn't going to yeah. say anything. I was going <laughs> to let you. Yeah, so thank you to uh, Craven to Motivate for that. And uh, Jason T. Mahoney for stowing that honor upon me. Uh, so I'm very grateful for that as well. Uh, but yeah, it's just going to be a lot more, you know, a lot more work coming in 2024. You know, I'm, my goal is to have more in 2024. And I feel like I'm, I'm getting there. And this year is going to be even bigger than the years before. So I'm just excited to see what 2024 has in store for me. Oh, wait a minute. Rage, do you want to join? She just ch hmm. chimed in. Or did you mean, did you press it by accident? But listen 20 and i said this when i created my vision board 2024 is the year of greatness and when i put my vision board together when we are planning things ahead and writing things down i said the 2024 is going to be the year of shine and wanting more and accomplishing more and i feel like this is our everybody's season to win and be great oh <laughs> it was an accident <laughs> Okay. <laughs> cool. Yes. And that's for all of us. Like you guys all have, everybody has been working. Everybody has been working so hard and diligently rage. I've been seeing what she's doing. I've been seeing what you've done and I seen you won the award. That's why I didn't say anything. I said, yeah. I'm waiting for him to mention it. <laughs> Cause yeah. I'm so proud of you. I knew it was coming. And to see everybody's accomplishments, because we all create ourselves a game plan. We all create ourselves a strategy of what we want to do and continue to be great for each year, each season. And I feel like 2024 is definitely that season. 2023 yeah. for me, I would say in a nutshell, it was kind of chaotic, but I managed. <laughs> I've, one thing I've learned from 2023 was balance okay. because everything was everywhere. One day mm -hmm. I'll be blessed enough to come on your platform. Girl, let's set it up. Let's set it up. <laughs> I got openings for me, and you know you are welcome to come on. So shoot me a DM, and let's set it up, Rage. I got to have you on, girl, because we got to talk hair and makeup. Um, <laughs> and you know that springtime is all about the colors and beauty. So I got to have you on in the spring. I'd be remiss. Yes. And, mm -hmm. I'll see, and I'll send you a couple of dates so we can set it up, girl. It's going to be awesome. We got to catch up because it's been a minute. Like, it's so great to see people that have been with you from the beginning mm -hmm. when you've started mm -hmm. something continue to support you 100%. Kevin, how does that feel you view for you before we close out our catch up? Because it's been so much. You've been doing so much, and I'm so yeah. proud of you. Uh, how does it feel? Me, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just saying, for me, yeah, like, it, it really is. Like, I, I don't take support lightly like if you support me and you've been somebody who's been supporting me from the beginning like some people have been watching me from like back when i was doing the web series so if you if you support me and you like you're watching everything i put out or at least you don't have to watch every single thing you know i know you get people you know life happens you know life be life and sometimes but if you watch majority of my stuff and you you comment and you reach out to me or just you know give me a word of encouragement that means a lot to me so i do not take it lightly 
Yes, and it's an amazing feeling to have people supporting you 100%. Mm -hmm. I got my new phone today, so that's why it's no flickering. And uh, last week it was going mm -hmm. crazy, but I made it work. I made, I locked that interview <laughs> in. I made it work. So I'm so <laughs> proud of today's conversation and being able to catch up with everyone. Everyone texted me to see how the new phone was working and stuff today. Mm. And I'm happy to have people like my friend Felicia, like K Tooks, the K Tooks spot, um, Jay Evans, uh, Kenny, Kenny Stallings, uh, Tony, uh, Tony Holly, and, and Rage, and my girlfriend Felicia. All of them have been so supported from the beginning since I started this platform. And I met K Tooks, I want to say back in 2020, when we were just in fresh off the pandemic, mm -hmm. like in the mm -hmm. smack dab in the middle of it. And Ever since then, these people have been rocking with me, supporting me 100%. Rage Good. all the way, and Felicia all the way from the beginning when I first started. And when I first started, it was right after high school. So you guys see the growth. Mm -hmm. You guys see everything. Like, you don't look the same the way you, your outlook on life. Yes, it, it, it's very different. When I hit 30, <laughs> I, I think that was the tipping point for me, Kevin Laughing. And, and it was because I kept saying it. It's, it's scary because I don't want to be 30. I want to be stay 20 forever, but mm -hmm. I know that's not possible. It, but life, life, life gets better after 30. And I think for me, I think 2020 changed a lot of us. Uh, I think you, I think nobody can go through 2020. If you survive 2020, you're not the same person that you were at the beginning of 2020. Like 2024, you is a completely different person from 2019. You 30. When I turned 30, <laughs> that that Halloween, the love life yeah. after 30. Yes, a light bulb light comes on. Okay, okay. for sure, it comes on. I start to see things in a different light that I wouldn't yeah. see maybe in my teen years when I first started. You start to have just a different outlook on things yeah. and your perspective on certain things changes as well too. So for yeah. me, almost 35 and I love it. I can't wait for 50 oh. and I'm just trying to hurry up the process. <laughs> because my mom is, yeah, my mom is like in her fifties and the same, energy that I have, I think I inherited it from her. Uh -huh. So that you pull that vibrant energy where I like to, to goof off and have mm -hmm. fun, like life is too short. And we've lost so many people throughout yes. 2020, even yes, starting off in the of 2024. And I said, if I'm going to celebrate 30, I'm going to do it well. So it's time to put on your big girl pants, mm -hmm. come on in and have a big life approach on things i've grown so much spiritually and through life in general the same mentally because i'll allow things to just get inside my head and just bring mm -hmm. me down where it's just like now it's just like ah, yeah. you shouldn't really care about that life is too short <laughs> just go ahead and put it down and think about it for a minute and i have done a lot of thinking and reflecting on these breaks on these days off now being an aunt to my nephew mm -hmm. who is now sitting up. <laughs> Not too long ago, I was holding him when my brother, his girlfriend brought him down here. And mm -hmm. now he's sitting up and he's already starting to figure things out. So <laughs> I, I seen the video my mom um, showed me. It was so funny because um, he was watching TV, literally sitting up watching TV and what happened was, <laughs> she said, sit back. And he literally sits back on his own. So he. He understands. <laughs> listen. Hey, girl. Shout out to Blue Harmony. We got to set something up. We got to catch up. <laughs> we got to catch up. So shout outs to Blue Harmony, who's an amazing, talented artist. So, Rage, check her out. I'm feeling vibes and energy from the both of you. I think you two ladies will love each other. The same energy that Rage has and that I have. Blue, I think you will love it. So definitely go and check her out. Um, but we were talking about uh, a shift when you hit your 30s. That's the last mm -hmm. part of the conversation yeah. before we wrap up. And You see life differently. Um, and it goes on and on and on. You know, Whereas in your 20s, you, it's just like Hey, I could do anything. Yeah, 
but net, but there's, however, there's mm -hmm. limits. But for me, 30, I, I see a different outlook. I see things that I want to try that I've never tried before, whereas I was restricted to certain things. And it's just like evolution is inevitable, but necessary. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And okay. I see the change, I see the growth. Soon as I hit 30, I felt so sexy. And and you have a certain swag about yourself. Like you just don't care. You and know what, anyway, you know what go ahead, I'm sorry. Maybe like when I got 30, um I think I, I found myself like I felt older. I started doing feeling like ways I didn't feel before. Like now I, the lights, I don't like the bright lights in my face. Like it's too bright in here. Turn the lights down. You know what I'm saying? Who's making all that noise outside? Calm those kids down. I don't like hearing all that noise. <laughs> I find myself more annoyed by, you know, little things. So yeah. you sound like my brother, my brother's <laughs> the same way. I remember I was making some kind of noise. I was saying you guys know the film with Jennifer Lewis, Jackie's back. That's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. And I was singing, I think one of the what is one of the songs she was singing in the movie, Love Goddess. <laughs> and he okay. um was sick. He wasn't feeling it that day because I think my brother's now in his 30s. He was celebrating his birthday this Wednesday, I told you. And I was singing Love Goddess, I think. <laughs> and he came out and knocked on my door. He came back to visit. And he said, uh, stop making all that noise. So he's not lying. Kevin is not lying. <laughs> you're 30 and you are pushing a certain age. <laughs> you you yeah. don't want to hear the noise. You, don't, you get irritated mm -hmm. by certain things. <laughs> but for me, my 20s, I'm going to say I, my patience was short for certain things. But now... I must say my patience is a whole lot better. We're now right. having this nephew yeah. here, yeah. this new life and gift to this fam to my family. I see a different perspective on things. I'm learning to be more patient. And it takes a lot. <laughs> it takes a lot about <laughs> life. It, it takes a lot. But I've learned that you don't need a necessary response for everything. Mm -hmm. You do things accordingly i still do things on a routine even that right there i think i I'm, you see yourself turning a lot into your parent and i'm pretty sure a lot of y'all watching yeah. this can see that as well yeah. too because my mom does things in a certain order and i literally have to stop and do a double take like <laughs> i'm doing i can't believe i'm doing the same thing that my mom is doing yeah. so it's scary you, it's like having an outer body experience. Like, is this really me? And mm -hmm. I have to catch myself sometimes. Like, okay, yeah, now you know, like growing growing up, they would always say, like, you'll understand when you get older. And then you get older, and you start to realize you're acting just like how they were acting. Yes, because my mom will do certain things, and my grandmother will catch it, and she'd be like, "You, you just like your mama." Because <laughs> my mom is a Libra. Okay, I'm a Scorpio. And I know how Libra and Scorpio women are. We we are we say what comes to our mind. And with my mom, when as the as the children would say, when she has her foot on your neck and she holds you accountable, I'm kind of the same way yeah. as well too. But I've learned to tone it down because mm -hmm. in my twenties it was worse. It was the worst. I it I'd be hot tempered in a second. I'd be ready to get up. <laughs> but I've learned to just in your thirties do it in a different way subtly yeah. i find myself realizing that i gave people that bitch please face all this that's another thing she does that too like she'll give me that side of my mama do that so <laughs> and i think i find myself doing it throughout some of my interviews and with some uh -huh. of the stuff that i'm sat with on the, <laughs> I'm sat with on the show i'm kind of side out what they're saying about a person and i'm just like i can't i'm like oh my god i definitely am turning into my yeah. mom for sure. And my <laughs> aunts will tell me that because we both look so much alike, identical. We could mm -hmm. be twins. And I catch myself sometimes like, okay, you're Stevie. You're not your mom. Yes, you have you, but you're, you're Stevie. You're no longer, you know, that. Yes, I just give a look before I comment. <laughs> my mom. Me too. Um, and I'll just, um, who was it? <laughs> I'll give you an example because I did it in an interview. Uh -huh. um, Bernard Q. Settles, okay. um, he asked me a question about fashion. and um, It was Kanye West. And I was trying so bad, <laughs> but the people caught on to it. They're just like, shade. 
because they pay the to to my eyes. Uh, Your eyes tell a story. And I, she said, how would you describe Kanye West's style? And I said, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Everybody started laughing at it. So <laughs> to myself, because I'm like, I don't want to be, I swear I don't, I don't mean to be, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to do it, but I catch it. I mean, it just happened. So, <laughs> He's like, yeah, it, it's, it's it's okay, you know, it's it's unique, you know. <laughs> and Bernard just cracked, everybody was cracking up laughing. So I'm just like, I didn't even do anything, but my face said it. So yeah. I definitely feel that rage. That was right there. But <laughs> the blessing of being 30, and to, to people out there that are in their 30s, going into their 40s, embrace it while you can. I'm telling mm -hmm. you because life is so short and I've seen people within an instant in 2023 up until kicking off the new year of 2024. We lost so many people yeah. and not just to the pandemic, but just in life in general. So live life to the fullest. And the reason why I come on and we're Kevin works out my, my method of rejuvenation and retreating. Well, how can I say pouring into myself? We all have to pour into ourselves self-care, whether it may be, you know, your mental or your spiritual, as Rage mentioned in the comments earlier. We have to make sure that we are taking time for ourselves. And the reason why I come on and I'm so happy and vibrant to see y'all is because that break. Yeah, I posted my stories, but I've, I've learned when to log off and put yeah, the phone you gotta have that break. Recharge is what it's called. And my mom would tell me that all the time. You're always on the phone. You're always doing something for your the platform. And a lot of people will tell me. And another thing, make time for family. Make the time for family. Uh, my cousin was in town over the weekend. Me and her was texting yesterday. And she was like, girl, why you, you didn't text me back? I said, oh, my God, my phone been acting crazy and stuff. <laughs> So I told her I missed the text, but I texted her back and she said, I'm not in town no more. We're heading back, but I got to catch her on the next one. So I make time for family. That is a priority. Thank right after I log off of this platform, I make sure that I, I text. Well, my girlfriend, Felicia, she texts me every day, every day, like at 8 or 9 a.m. in the morning. And I just mm. fresh out of bed, getting out of bed, you know. Waking up or whatever, starting my day with my affirmations and prayers or whatever, and she'll text me. So those are the things that I look forward to. And mm -hmm. I love what Rage just said. She says, you can't pour from an empty cup. We give mm -hmm. so much of ourselves to the world in this business as hairstylists, as makeup artists, as actors, directors, producers. We give so much of ourselves because we are in high demand. But we still have to make sure that we are taking care of number one. And my mom would tell me that all the time. And Rage, I think you remember this. There was when I had the platinum blonde hair. That day I did that interview. <laughs> I think it was we were covering hot topics mm -hmm. or celebrity, what was going on with celebrities. I used to do it all the time on the FB. Yeah. And we didn't really have a name for style by Stevie. But that day I had a sinus infection, believe it or not, and I did that whole entire show. I'm telling you, I did that whole entire show. And then after that, I took about a week off and I came back rejuvenating. And that was because I kept going, 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 yeah, going. You, you have you to know? take a break. Your body will let you know when it can no longer go. So you have to listen to your body. <laughs> listen yeah. to your body. Um, every one should have everyone should get their overflow unfortunately i grew up around narcissistic people i give my last to them and i never got a call or text asking are you okay yeah if they're not pouring into you, you it's, it's times you have to cut ties with people but if see, they're actually, not pouring, that's actually go ahead. a good thing that's actually a good thing because you're finding out who's not for you so the sooner you find out the better cut them people from your life you don't need them in your life the people who are there for you are going to be there for you so that that to me is a blessing to find out that you know some people were not there for me get them out there. listen be, be obedient to your body i'm telling you um i did some of the show this week just recovering from a cold i said i gotta come back i gotta do this so i took those couple of days off those days that i had off and i came back rejuvenated feeling great and it's because i took that break mm -hmm. listen to your body our bodies are are like cars we go on e 
and you have to listen to it when your body is on empty you have to recharge and refuel just like when you put gas in the car mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to make sure that you are refueling your body with the proper nutrients. Drink your water, making sure that you are staying alert. And protecting your mental health and space is key as well, too. And I talked about this last week with Fernando. We talked about mental health and protecting mm -hmm. your, your peace and your energy. I've had to unfollow some people and cut some people off. And I'm just like, I've seen posts and stuff. I, stuff I wasn't pleased with. I said, oh, so that's how you feel about that certain mm -hmm. thing. Yep. And I've had to cut people off and unfollow. And I'm just like, I can't stand behind you with this. This is not what mm -hmm. I stand for. And it's dangerous to my mental if you believe this. So mm -hmm. even with this election coming up, and I know y'all are, y'all, is she going to talk about it? Listen, <laughs> the 2024 election is coming up. I, and I don't uh no, I know you guys hate it so much. <laughs> I just said something. I don't even know because I mean the options that we have is just okay. It's what Fernando, we got. Touched on it. <laughs> Fernando touched on it last week. Uh, who else? Keith Boykin. When I kicked off the January season, I had it on with mm -hmm. him. Listen, you guys, make sure that you are protecting your peace and mental. Do not, and I mean do not do what I do for the 20, did for the 2020 election. And that was, I mean, every minute I was glued to the TV screen, to the news. Mm -hmm. Okay, did he get it? Did he get it? It's a close call. And then that day that he won, it was a Saturday when we found out. The options are full of proof. <laughs> Throw the whole election away. Shout outs to Marcos <laughs> Luis, host of the One Mike Night podcast. Listen. Do what you got to do to protect your mental peace and being vote if you have to do what you got to do, which is the right thing. Um, but make sure that you are protecting your peace. I know elections can, mm -hmm. after what we've experienced with 2020, that was a lot. And I mean, yeah. my eyes were 24 7 to the phone, checking everything to the television. I'm just like, okay, this a lot. Staying up days and night, losing sleep, like, oh God, yeah. our democracy. <laughs> So please make sure that you are protecting your peace and well-being with this election. Yes, I'm telling you. Your peace at all costs. It, 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 this is a scary election. This, I mean, because this is, uh, for the first time, I said, they said this is the, the first time that we've ever had two uh, candidates that were this old. And it's like, I, I really honestly wish that Joe Biden would have been like a one term and like let somebody else step in because he doesn't always seem like he's there. You know, like you see him like he, he, he he looks like he's stumbling. Like he, he kind of looks like he has dementia sometimes. And it just, I don't, I don't know. And I'm just like, I don't want this man running the, run the country because he doesn't seem fit to run the country. But I know that I don't want Trump to run the country. So it's just, you know, it's like, what do you do? I posted something in the stories, and if you guys have seen it, it was talking about Trump. You, you have to check it out. Um, they posted it. No, it's never present. I have my passport. I'm ready to leave. You know what? A lot of people are preparing themselves for if this man comes back in the White House again, mm -hmm. Trump. And I mean, hey. you've got over 91 counts of charges. And it's like, they, so I mean, <laughs> they won't lock him up at all. Like he gets away with everything that nobody else would ever be able to get uh, get away with. And I'm just like, I don't understand how he's not locked up or, or not able to be eligible to run for president, but he just is. It's like they're just letting everything go under, sweep everything under the carpet for him, like and rolling out the red carpet for him so that he can become president. So I, I don't want a repeat of 20, 2020, and 2016, and I don't want to repeat that at all, but it's like we're here. And I think that they should go ahead and, I mean, they've already banned him on, on the ballot in certain states. Mm -hmm. He shouldn't even be able to run to Rage's point. And Blue says, I'm ready to go back to London. Yeah, people want freedom. They don't, with all of these things that people are taking away your rights and just your 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 liberation, it's, it's so much going on. I'm not even yeah. going to dive deep into that because I know politics can... Like Ray said, it can be stressful to a lot of people. So that's why I even kind of took a break from because I used to touch on that mm. and pop culture, what goes on. I said, okay, that after <laughs> that election, yeah, never again will I talk about it. I'll yeah. touch on it briefly here and there and give my opinion. But other than that, mm -mm, nope, yeah. can't do it. It's, <laughs> it's stressful. It, it really is.
So I'm, you know, I'm just trying to trying to be positive and have a positive outlook on it. So you know, when November gets here, I'm gonna do my part, and I'm just asking everybody else to do the same thing. Do your part, and you know, we we'll just have to get through this together. I mean, for those who, for those of y'all that's not gonna leave the country, because some of y'all are leaving, so some of y'all are gonna leave us here, and we're gonna have to do it ourselves. But you know, we gonna we gonna get through it. Absolutely. And we're going to continue to let our voices be heard. And I'm encouraging people to go out there and let their voices be heard as well to take it to the ballot box. You can do mail in. Make sure that you do that. Uh, well, thank goodness I trust in God Bezos politics before. I trust in God Bezos politics all the time. They playing with our money, mental health, all of that. No, thank you. Absolutely. Right. And that's another thing. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it. Um, Inflation. Oh, God, listen, <laughs> going to the grocery store now is just like, you, you really have to get the bare essentials because th these prices have just gone, they, they, they skyrocket. And it's just, it's almost a horror show, a horror movie going to the, the, the grocery store just to get groceries. I, I give you an example. My grandmother loves honey buns. The price mm -hmm. of honey buns in the store has even went up. Like things are going up. And even eggs, like the like Kevin yeah. just said, the very essentials things are going up. That's not even girl, when I rage, girl, I'm telling you, when I seen that story over the weekend, I think it was from the Grio. The Grio posted it. Mm -hmm. And then uh ABC and it's everywhere. They were talking about selling bad food at high prices. You're not lying about that. Now, they definitely are doing that. <laughs> I remember I could get four bags of chips for a dollar. I remember that too. You can go right there. Yep. <laughs> Even for that, I, I love Doritos. That's another one of my guilty pleasures. I love Doritos and I also love uh, barbecue potato chips. They went up. Yeah. I was in the grocery store last week and I was looking at a bag of, uh, I think it was a bag of Doritos. One bag of Doritos, like, you know, the, the big bag of Doritos, was like $5. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, $5? <laughs> no, I'm good. Bread was like 50 it's cents crazy. back in the day. Yep. It's crazy. But yeah, something's got to change. And uh, I'm just hoping for, for the best. The, the same here. Uh, we'd be like on good times. Like uh, <laughs> when Florida <laughs> bought that meat. Yeah. When Florida bought that meat <laughs> at, at, at Bargain Mark. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> But hey, there's nothing wrong with shopping on the reduced rack in your grocery stores as well. Oh, Just a few yeah. tips. Use coupons too as well too. Rack up. I have a girlfriend and she does couponing. And I mean, she showed me, she opened a binder full of coupons. Mm -hmm. So she racks up. So that's the best time. Let me start mm -hmm. a farm at this point. I know, right? With everything yeah. that's going on a lot. I mean, even with that, the harvesting and the crops, the, the, the cows, all of that. You'd have to need, yeah, need yeah. all of that stuff. People have to survive. So we're going to see with everything going on up. We're going to see these next few couple of days yeah. with everything going up. So Everything going up but the wages. So, you know. yeah. A friend of mine started growing out her own backyard, and the cops came out and charged her. Now, wow, that's crazy. I, I have seen that. And I think that is great, too, if you start growing your own stuff. Um. She's on YouTube and I watch her channel. I think it's Yellow Garden Hoodstead, I think is her name. And she grows her own vegetables and everything mm -hmm. from her backyard. And she's able to share it with her children. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, she's got, and a lot of people store their food. So I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of people store their vegetables and stuff and preserve them. So those are just a few ways that you can save money. And not even have to go to school. Like but, Blue just said, grow your own stuff. But I hate but that I, they charge back, back to that comment. You're like, how are they charging you a five hundred dollar fine just for growing stuff in your backyard? Like you can't do that. If this is my backyard, I can't I can't grow a farm in my backyard. You tell me you're gonna charge me five hundred dollars. I'm gonna sum it up to two words: systematic racism. Systematic racism. <laughs> Here we go. I have seen the government do try to regulate the so the seeds and soil. Yes, with a lot of farmers out here. There's a lot of farmers. So how are they going to yeah. be able to grow on their crops and their land and everything? How are they going to be able to do that and it's provide these animals? 
to, to give them the nutrient, everything they need so that they can create, so that we'll be able to have eggs and have milk right. or cheese or whatever. So it goes back into it. So I've been watching a lot of documentaries on that and how we invest and turn back. Hi, Rizzy. Mm -hmm. I am doing oh, wonderful. I'm doing well also. <laughs> We are just talking about this inflation before we close out catching up with Kevin. Um, but yes, no, because they want to regulate uh -huh. everything. Mm. She lived by a bunch of <laughs> Just going back to what you said, systematic racism. Yeah. I mean, how how are we as black people supposed to survive in this country when uh, we can't no. even do stuff in our own backyard? Yeah, that's crazy. Like, like you charging, I still can't get over like you charging somebody five hundred dollars to grow stuff in their own backyard. That that to me is crazy. But thank you, Rizzy. But, but, appreciate that. Thank you, Rizzy. Uh, I'm I'm just baffled. Now I can see if you. Charging somebody for a parking ticket, but right. for growing vegetables and stuff that I can cook and harvest in my own backyard, they did it to the farmers back in the day. Yes, and they so are they trying to revert back yeah. to the old time. Systematic racism. They would rather keep. They don't want us to be able to invest. They don't want us to survive. Just want us to mate with them. But that's not my business. <laughs> Oh, he said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but I find it baffling that I don't see how that's bad when food is so expensive already. Right, Rizzy? Right. I mean, growing from my own backyard. I know my father does tomatoes. My grandmother grows her um, tomatoes and vegetables in her yard as well, too. And I'm down here in South Carolina. System, there's mm -hmm. racism down here as well, too. Oh, that, but... Yeah. For growing vegetables in my own yard, and that I mean, for a bag of carrots is is high as well too. I love I yeah. get my vegetables and stuff, but for a bag of carrots, you guys have seen the price of that. You've seen the price of onions. You've seen the price mm -hmm. of uh, tomatoes. Things are going up because the government can't get their taxes off your food that you grow out of your own yard. Okay, racism, racism seems go ahead. Kevin, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just yeah, reading the comment. Racism seems like it will never end. It's insane. I agree. I agree. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's still here. We we as black people, yeah. we are still fighting in this country to let people know, okay, we're here. We contributed to this as well, too. You cannot erase it. And they're already trying to erase our history and lineage out of the schools, banning books, all of these things that you guys have seen on the news. And that's why I did the Black History Month trivia with Kevin. And I'm going to be doing more things like that because we need to know about our history. And you can't yeah. just ban books. So that's why we go and we watch a lot of doc. We need to watch our documentaries, educate ourselves on everything, mm -hmm. about owning businesses, about making sure. I mean, they're, because there are Black farmers and sharecroppers out here. Mm -hmm. My great aunt was a farmer before her husband transitioned decades ago and she gave me the rundown on the pros and the cons of farming and rage was talking about getting into it so i mean there's nothing wrong with that you guys have seen Khalees, the singer Khalees, right mm -hmm. i mean she's got yeah. her own phone yep she does they always, they always try to dismiss what happens to black people and native people definitely but the thing about us is that we're so resilient uh, you can't erase this no matter how much you try. They're trying, like you said, to ban books. They try to, you know, erase black. They're trying to change the narrative of how slavery was and how, and try to say how we we came up here on our own and, you know, like not like they just chained us up and brought us over here, but we chose to come over here freely. We know that's not true. No matter how much you try to change the story, history is still going to be history, and that's why it's important that we have Black History Month and Black Black leaders that are always telling and teaching the true stories of our Black history. Because if not, you see how they're trying to change the narrative. So it's very important that we keep it out, keep our history alive. And Marcos Luis, who is the host of One Mike Night Podcast, shout outs to Marcos. He says that Black history should be every day, not just a month. It's American history. I love Khalees and what she's doing. It's education. It is. And 
I don't know that many black women who are farmers who have their own mm. farm, who have their own animals. I, I've never seen that before. So what she's doing is groundbreaking. And we're going to see more and more. Well, there's Jadina, the singer Jadina. He, I think he has a farm oh, yeah, too yeah, in Lenny yeah, Crabbe. Yeah, yeah. I think he yeah. does too. So he has his own vegetables. Like when he was showing a tour of his home, yes, and her own land, exactly. Able to share crop and grow vegetables and fruits on their own land and mm. not be fined. $500, right. I can't get over that. Yeah, that, that, that should be illegal to me. I'm, especially if I own the house. If I own my house and I own my land, you're not going to tell me I can't grow stuff on my land and try to charge me a $500 fine. That's not happening. Uh, That's amazing. Schools really need to start teaching these important subjects. And they're trying to ban it. Yeah. Trying to ban it. Yeah. So they, they don't want all of this black excellence to get out there, but it's going to keep coming. You know, it's going to keep shining. It's just even like with, with uh, kind of taking it over to like the entertainment side with Issa Rae, how she was saying how a lot of the black shows are getting canceled and they're actually doing well. Like uh, the show Rap Shit, uh, it got canceled after two seasons and it was doing really well. But it's just like every every black show that was on Max was getting canceled and it just wasn't making sense. But other shows are getting pushed through for seasons, you know, season after season after season. But the black shows that are actually being watched get canceled all the time. It's like they're trying. And, you know, when 2020 came around, everybody was trying to be on the black bandwagon and green light and everything and saying, oh, we're going to donate to you all these black causes and everything. But then you saw them pulling out slowly over time and canceling black shows and films and things like that over time. So it's like, are you really here to try to, you know, push, you know, help to push the black, you know, people forward, or are you just trying to continue to try to hold us back? Um, but yeah, I just, we have to keep fighting. We have to keep fighting, no matter how many times they try to hold us down. We are strong people, and we are definitely going to be able to make it. So we just got to keep pushing. Absolutely. Like, I hardly even learned about the true history. I was just, yeah, they, they try to keep mm -hmm. it out of it. They don't want you to know about it. Yeah. That's why in Florida they started banning books and everything. Yeah. They don't want you to learn about it. That's why even that's why when it's time for me to have children, they'll be homeschooled because my kids won't be told a bunch of lies. Yeah, black mm -hmm. people, we invented this yeah. world, we invented the culture. You can't erase that. Yeah, uh, it's important that you just keep those books around. If they're trying to ban. It's important that you read those books because it's something in the books they don't want us to know. And I just absolutely. <laughs> I refuse you to tell me what I can learn. Uh, and throughout this week, I've been posting little tidbits, little black historical figures. I mean, mm. we, we know about Martin Luther King. We know about mm. uh, Rosa right. Parks. But Malcolm what Milton. about Eldridge Cleaver? What right. about the Black Panther movement? I mean, there's so many. Of course, James Baldwin. Right. Um, Bainham and Rustin. I mean, there are so many people that we can be learning about. We're the blueprint of the whole universe, and these black babies can't be told about it. BS, mm. right? In Florida, when when I seen shout out to my brother King Jobs, um, the Satan he calls him the Satan. He doesn't call him um, the Santo. <laughs> I've heard that before. Yes, <laughs> I've heard that before. Um, <laughs> when I seen that press conference where he's like, "We're banning these books," so I seen the clip somewhere of him yeah. talking about we're banning. I'm like, why? Why? Because you don't want people to know the true history of this country. What if yeah. we post those every day? Because it makes them feel uncomfortable, you know. So it's like it's always about making sure that they're comfortable and we're com we're second there, even if it's going to be hurting us. We we come second to to them. So as long as they're comfortable, the world can go on. But the minute they start feeling a little bit uncomfortable, a oh, hold up, brothers, back, take this book out, take this class out because white people are not enjoying this. They 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 feel some kind of way about us learning about the true history. Of what happened in this country and it's like I, I get it look things have happened you may not just because it happened in, in the past doesn't mean you're like that today i'm not going to walk out here and think that a white person is a slave owner today but in the past it happened so it, it, you know you have to go along with what his what history what really happened in real history so you know you can't just be changing stories up to be like well no actually they weren't slaves they were they came over here because they wanted a better life and we provided that for them no you you brought us over here and changed and you whipped us and you killed us and you know you you made us uh, sleep with each other and you slept with us. And 
You did all that stuff. So that's, just, stuff, that, that's what we have. That's away from our families, all of these things. Mm. Hey, Shamar. Kevin said, I um, mean, yeah. He says, what's what's up, Jamar? Um, Blue says, because the day we all know our true selves and accept it, the pale ones are scared to come outside. It's the fact that slavery didn't even happen. Oh, yeah, they deny that. Yeah. And Nikki, I'm down here in South Carolina, so I know y'all looking at me like, what you going to say about Nikki? Girl, <laughs> girl, you, you don't know what that was. And then you went on the Breakfast Club, and yeah. you don't know what that was. Mm. Mm. Y'all, y'all want to deny critical race theory. Y'all don't want to talk right. about it in schools. Y'all want to erase right. it. Y'all don't want to talk about slavery. You don't want to talk about racism. <laughs> well, y'all literally are the oppressors. Exactly. Literally. <laughs> like, when I seen that clip for her, I'm just like, girl, what is you doing? What, what is you talking about? It happened. <laughs> How can we? The, I mean, they deny it. They're they're denying racism. That's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're. I think, and I've seen a lot of Republican candidates out here acting as if it doesn't exist. It exists. Right. This is long as Kevin here is a black man. I'm a black woman, and I walked walk out in the middle of. I could go in anywhere and easily be racially profiled. Yep. Racism is here. So. Good point, Rizzy. Thank you for bringing that up because they do deny it. They do. And they act as if it never happened. Oh, stop bringing it up. Mm. No, we can never stop bringing that up. No, because you're still mm. benefiting from the effects of it today, so I can't stop bringing it up when you still benefit from the results of slavery. People can't get jobs because of the color of their skin tones. It's sad to me. That's colorism. That is colorism, and uh, it was a young lady who did a TikTok video talking about colorism. I talk a lot about it on my platform as well, too. That is mm. something that is within the black community. That's a whole nother conversation, baby. But it ties <laughs> it is on the scale of racism, believe it or not, because it goes all the way back to the slavery era. Mm. And I'm going to break it down for you. Lighter skinned slaves in the house, ones that about me and Kevin's complexion were in the fields. So racism, colorism is on on the scale of racism. I lost a job because I had long locks. I know you guys seen the uh, video of the young man on yeah. there too, where he still was expelled. Mm -hmm. Why are we expelling children? And I did a post last week about this. Uh, what does my hair have to do with me getting a decent, proper education? Right. It shouldn't stop me from getting a decent, proper education. Or being able to play, play sports, right? And his, his locks man. were neat. It it wasn't like his locks were like nappy or anything. Like they were they were neat. So it's just you know anything anything they can do to try to you know hold us back, you know, they do that. I'm a Mexican, and yeah. my dad couldn't get jobs because he would be seen as less. Yes, yeah. it, it, person of color, mm -hmm. racism is it, it affects us as people of color and black people. And indigenous yeah. people, as long as I'm a black woman, I'll never step foot in Texas. Mm. Oh, it's the worst there. Um, of course, deep down in the South, mm. South, down here in South Carolina as well, too, is is deep hearted racism. Mm. Um, I, feel Marco, way, I feel that way about Florida now. Like, I, I've been to Texas before, it was back years ago, but I feel that way about Florida now. Like, the way Florida has changed now, with, you know, as you said, the same, I, I don't think I want to go back to Florida. He's, yeah, my, my brother said that he was going to visit. I, I was kind of fussy. I was kind of upset, and I told my mom about it. I said, they're going to Florida for a vacay? I think it was for to celebrate, to go out of town or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think it's for his birthday last year. And I said, they're going out to celebrate in Florida. I said, I wouldn't want them going there. They don't need to be going to no Florida. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I told my mom. Uh, Marco said, it's happening to me now. As I'm walking down the street, white women holding their purses. Fear, mm. fear of us. Yeah. Florida too, especially about my sexuality. Yes, yeah, it's all a form of oppression. So they figure, let's go after the most vulnerable, which is people of color, LGBT people, black people. Let's go after them and take away all their rights because they don't matter, but you do matter. 
and we're going to continue as Kevin said to let our voices be heard. Mm -hmm. They'll take your children away from you if you are a woman and look like a man. Now that right there mm -hmm. is what I like to call because black it's mostly black women, um, massageur, okay. and I'm pretty sure you guys have mm -hmm. heard that term. Mm -hmm. uh, it's when and I give you an example uh, of some women who've experienced it. I know myself because I'm five foot seven, I'm thick, curvy, and I have experienced it. So uh, Serena Williams, Michelle mm -hmm. Obama, uh, who's another one, Meg Thee Stallion, uh, Sierra. These are black women, Brittany Grinner, who have experienced mm -hmm. massage you are. So it, it, it happens, it's on the scale of racism and sexism. And it, it affects black women. It is very, very dangerous because they say, oh, why her hands look so big? Why yeah. are her shoulders so long? Yeah. Uh, all of these things, because what my question is, what is a black, that's all, again, a whole other conversation, but these are all <laughs> forms of oppression. They go on the scale of racism and they affect black people and black women. So we, it's like a gumbo of things. And it's just like, wow, how do you know yeah. so much about it? And I try not to talk about it in my interview. I kind of give a nod to it, but uh -huh. I, I, but these, we need to know. We need to know yeah. because we've been in the fog for so long. If we don't educate our people on it, then they're not going to know. So thank you for bringing that up, period. And I'm 5'10". Yes, if you are a tall woman, if you are muscular or athletic built like Serena Williams, they are mm -hmm. going to do that. Question is, how do we combat the racism or oppression? Mm -hmm. Continue to call it out. Yeah. And I think the president that we've had in the White House that did absolutely nothing when a pandemic just broke out of control, that was the part. I'm glad. I'm glad that he was the president because he showed me the people who I needed to avoid. I, mm -hmm. I do not like Trump. I'm not a Trump supporter at all. But I'm saying that because he showed me the people who I thought were you know, the other kind right. where my friends will show yeah. you who they truly are and who they stand for. They mm -hmm. don't like you because you black. So they figure this is my guy. But yeah, yeah, the world is definitely truly scary. And that's why we, like Kevin said earlier, we have to take it to the boxes mm -hmm. and people are starting mm -hmm. to leave the United States. They're leaving the country. Let your voice yeah. be heard. And people are starting to do that with this new generation and more positive representation in media. We are the ones who control and at that art, that is artists, filmmakers, musicians. We've been calling it out, especially with the protesting and other things. The real question is, are they going to stop and deny, stop denying the BS and change themselves? That part. <laughs> they have to be willing to learn. They have to be willing to learn and educate it. And I have white friends and white peers and counterparts and some I've never really had any apologize but i've seen some apologize to black people for the stuff that they've done to us i've mm -hmm. literally seen this with my own two eyes and it's like yeah. wow yeah I mean, yeah let's, let's make it clear because I, I know a lot of, of, of great white people as well we're not saying that white people are evil or anything like that we're, we're talking about stuff that's happened in history though and with stuff that's still happening today that they benefit from because of what happened back in the day but there are a lot of good people white, white people out there we know that we appreciate y'all um, but just like there's good with anything that's always bad. So, you know, we have to talk about it. Absolutely. And like Blue, she just said, you can't deny it. It's here. Racism is here and it's alive and living. And with us all being in the entertainment business, because there's so many entertainers. You got Blue, she's a singer. Marcos, who's an actor and he hosts his podcast. Kevin, who's an actor. Mm -hmm. Myself, who works in the fashion. Oh, it's even worse than the fashion and the beauty world. Let me tell you. I can you. believe it. I can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and even at as actors, the Grio posted something last week, and they said, are we ready, ready to have the conversation about ethnic training when it comes to hairstyling mm -hmm. for actors and actresses on set, Black actors and Black actresses? Because I'm not about to have somebody who's not qualified to do my hair, do my hair. That's why I took beauty school. So I know how, mm -hmm. as a Black woman, I know how to work with my hair texture and what works for me. Uh you wouldn't use something that you would use on some the other kinds hair on my hair because mm -hmm. I have a different hair texture. And plus my hair is relaxed underneath this all. I know you guys think this is my real hair. No, it's not. 
You know, we, <laughs> we have some secrets over here. <laughs> but even with that, it takes educating and understanding. Mm-hmm. And and one actress who kind of touched on this as well, too, um, and I feel like she never gets her flowers if she ever sees this, is Victoria Rao. She said when she was doing mm-hmm. the show, The Young and the Restless, they didn't even know how to work with some of the Black characters on that show's hair mm-hmm. texture. She experienced racism. One of the actresses on the show spit on her. So wow. it's just like she came out parading with this afro on, emulating being a black woman. Mm-hmm. And it was a white actress. So this literally happened on um, Victoria Rouse. She g- talked about growing up in foster care and her mother and the upbringing and how she had to go with what was it? Because we know that the soap operas, um, Days of Our Lives, The mm-hmm. Bold and the Beautiful, uh, which is the sister show of The Young and the, Rec- the, young and the Restless, uh, mm-hmm. they're all up under the umbrella of Viacom. Okay. And how she had to go to what was it the director or somebody and say hey can we bring somebody in who can work on some of the black actors on the show hair texture because this is like okay even with that we need to put she even wanted to put some of the actors in the black actors in a room together so they'd be able to get their hair done everything like that yeah. they got that but <laughs> even with that they do more hassle so a white ally should help too that's just a lot. That definitely should do. Well, I hope you guys are paying attention. You guys caught on to it. That, that's all I have to say on that. We <laughs> still have a lot of work to do we in do. this country. And it starts by educating ourselves. Mm-hmm. So that's why when you guys hear me talk about these historical figures on the platform, I post them every day on my Instagram. If you follow me, you see that I speak up for us. And I make sure that we are represented. And you've seen everybody, almost everybody here on my platform. And I, but mostly <coughs> black, black actors, black mm-hmm. filmmakers, black directors, uh, black artists, because I want us to be represented and included also. So I'm not gonna exclude anybody here on my platform. And that's important. We still have a lot to do with, they're talking about diversity training. And it's just like, yeah, I, I, I do believe you need to do that. Yeah, you need yeah. to do that. Because I'm not going to have somebody working on my hair that doesn't know how to work with a 4C curl pattern or a 3A curl pattern. I, or, or even when it comes to doing makeup, black makeup. That, that's an issue in the fashion mm-hmm. and beauty world as well, too. And it was a black model. She did a TikTok, and they gave her the wrong shade of foundation. And that's a thing that, that happens even on set with actors, mm-hmm. too. Not mm-hmm. just in the fashion and beauty world. So... Yes, you definitely need it. They need training. Definitely, yeah. I'm not opposed to anybody else that's not black doing my hair, <laughs> but you got to know how to work with my hair texture, though. <laughs> Be skilled enough that you're able to work with my hair texture or know my foundation shade. <laughs> black people need to be included on everything. Black and definitely. people of color, period. Indigenous, all mm-hmm. of us, you cannot exclude us or erase our history because we are here. Yep. We're, we're not going anywhere. And let me try not to get all radical because I tried not to, but y'all bought it out of me today. Y'all bought it out of me today. It was needed. But yeah, we have a lot of work to do. We do. And there's so many books that you can pick up. Now that they're banning books, you can go to your local library, pick it up. Look, there's so many authors out here that we can learn from. Eric, I think it's Eric Jerome Dickey, was oh, always yeah. on CNN. Mm-hmm. There's so many out here. Keith Borkin, who I just had on wrote a book about it and he put in the beginning of the book a chronological timeline of everything that black people has experienced for years up until 2020 and the book is called why does everything have to be about race it is an amazing read and i think i stopped like on chapter five so it talks about the stono rebellion it talks all the way up until the trump era so if you have not read the book or seen it, you need to go to Keith Borkin's page. And I pinned his interview here so you guys will be able to go back and check that interview out. Very Mm -hmm. informative. And he spit a lot of gems. And Kendall, yes, a great selection of black books on Black History Month and historical figures. Other than Martin Luther King Jr. and Madam C.J. Walker and Malcolm X and Coretta Scott King and Rosa Parks. There's so many more Mm -hmm. activists out here. 
I'm telling you, Marsha P. Johnson, uh, Bernard Rustin, uh, what's another one? Like I said, Eldridge Cleaver is so many. Hugh P. Newton. There's yeah. so many that we can do doing our research on as well. So make sure that you guys are doing the research. Before we close out this amazing conversation, <laughs> which was needed, and I'm yeah, glad you guys it was. Up. <laughs> Kevin, are there any final thoughts that you would like to give to the audience? Because we touched on a number of things today we in this did. conversation. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, again, just, you know, definitely make sure that you're getting out here and voting uh, in November. Uh, we have got to <laughs> keep that crazy man out, out the office. Um, but also, uh, just if you have a dream or anything, you know, that you want to do, don't let anybody deter you from doing that. Uh, a lot of people even our family can get in, you know, in your heads and try to tell you not to do something and they're trying to protect yeah. you because they don't see the vision. But you see the vision. If you have a vision that was implanted into your heart, it was put there for a reason. So do not let anything stop you from seeing that through, uh, not even your family. And you have to keep going. Um, and this is something I had to tell myself because I had my own family that was looking at, trying to look out for me because they were scared of me failing as an actor. But right. now they're they're so supportive because they see that I didn't give up and I showed them that no, this was in my heart and I knew that I was meant to do this. And now they see all that I've done and they're just like so proud of me. But that's because I had to push myself. Nobody else can push you, you harder than you can push yourself. So you have to push yourself and you have to keep going regardless of what anybody says. I don't care if it's your mother and you and your mother are close like this. You have to make that dream come true. You have to put in that work. So Absolutely. And to add on to what Kevin just said, today's final thought comes from Sherry Shepard. She says, run towards the very thing that you fear because there's amazing blessings on the other side. And that comes from Sherry Shepard. Yes, pushing yourself to work hard for your dream is hard. It's hard, but it's so worth it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So keep going. Keep going. And um, as Fernando said last week, the marathon continues. So we got a lot of work to do with this November coming up. So make sure that you guys are staying on top of that. And Kevin, always a pleasure catching up with you. We got to bring you. you back again. Yes. So where can everyone follow you and look forward to these upcoming projects that you have coming up? Um, well, you can follow me on uh, all social media at the Kevin J Stone. That's on Twitter or X now, Instagram, um, Spill as well. Um, and then for the, the projects that I'm in, if you go on Peacock, if you go on Amazon Prime, if you go on Tubi and you just search my name, Kevin J Stone, any film that I'm in will pop up there. So, you know, do that and support those projects. I appreciate it. There you have it, Fashion Dolls. And joining me tomorrow, we have Kenneth Grissom joining me. So make sure you guys tune in. And Kevin, again, always a pleasure. We got to set something up for the springtime. We do. All of y'all, just amazing. Y'all pulled me out of my element because I didn't want to get all radical. But <laughs> y'all bought it out of me. Y'all bought it out of me. And it was needed because we needed to talk about it. So thank y'all all so much for y'all love and support and just tuning in. And the replay will be up. And you head on over and subscribe to Style by Stevie Daytime on YouTube and hit that bell so you'll be notified when new interviews are uploaded. Again, I think this is interview 570. So thank you all so much for your love and support. And again, the marathon continues. So we're going to keep going and continuing on. Right. And I want you guys to too. Educate yourself and be, be aware. And as Kevin stated, make sure that you are going out this November and doing what needs to be done. Take care, everyone.